while some people may roll their eyes at the description of Detroit being a world-class city, there are some things about Detroit that are undeniably world-class, among them the Detroit Institute of Arts. And what a stretch this has been for the DIA. It came through a near-death experience, and now, a year after the city's emergence from bankruptcy, the DIA moves into a new era with new leadership. The new head of the DIA is Salvador Celar Pons, my next guest on Flashpoint. Thank you very much for being here, Salvador, and congratulations on the, uh, on, on, on the new job. Thank you very much. But you have been in Detroit for uh, for quite a while. You 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 started at the DIA back in 2008. I think you so you've been through uh, enough to understand what this institution means to the city. You also went through. Try to describe what it was like there when uh, we wondered if the art might be for sale. Well, it's one of the best museums in the country and one of the most beautiful museums in the world. Yeah. And I knew it yeah. uh, as a European from Spain, where I was born and raised, as uh, a world class. Uh, institution and I came to Detroit because I wanted to work in a museum like that and going through the bankruptcy I think the museum did an outstanding job we continue doing our work every day and uh, uh, continue our programs and exhibitions in a, in a way that internally uh, even though outside of the museum there were so many things going on <laughs> we were very much in focus you have worked at a number of museums around the world, uh, not just in Spain, but in Rome as well. So the idea that uh, a museum would be forced to sell its art, how, did, how was that sitting with you through that process? I can't tell you that as a European or as a Spaniard, my, my country would never sell <laughs> a collection like the collection at the Prada Museum. They would die of hunger before we would sell a painting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, but the, as I've told people though since then, it's really interesting. I, I think that in many ways art saved the city of Detroit. It was the, uh, the reach out to make sure that the DIA stayed, stayed solvent and stayed together that led to the, uh, the grand bargain, which ended up saving the whole thing. It's an interesting thing I, that we're I, the city that art saved. I, I think, I think that's a very, very well set in your part, and uh, I think the museum uh, has um, played an important role in saving the city. And uh, w when you think of important cities in the world, or when you think about revitalization of a city, uh, important cultural institution like the DI with a world-class collection can have a wonderful role yeah. in helping. Um, there have been some, though, that believe that the, the DIA was kind of tone deaf uh, around the time. It, with, with, with everything still so fresh, we had controversies over pay raises and bonuses that were being paid, and that the DIA, uh, the criticisms, you've heard them, you've read them, uh, uh, that the DIA really wasn't very sensitive to the rest of the city and to people who were having to uh, go through hard times because of the bankruptcy, and that maybe you kind of lost your way a little bit. What do you say to people who... who wondered if, uh, allowed about that often. <laughs> well, I think uh, the museum has kept, uh, has, has continues to play an important role in the city and we continue to offer our uh, programs and exhibitions and we welcome everybody and we want everybody to be part of, uh, of the museum and feel that they are represented. So. I think uh, the museum is moving into the right direction. Um, I want to talk about uh, 30 Americans, which is there right now. In fact, starting tomorrow, uh, it's a free exhibition uh, for the next couple of weeks, the DIA. But this is a, a rather astonishing collection of art. Give me your take on it. It's a fantastic show. It features uh, 55 works by contemporary African-American artists. And it comes from the Rubel Collection in Miami, in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it is beautiful. The works are absolutely personal, so individualized, and at the same time monumental. I think it's an exhibition that uh, is very powerful and relates very well to uh, the city of Detroit. Um, we have a large population of African-American residents, and I think um, our residents will be excited and are excited to, to come mm -hmm. and visit. There is a, a wonderful opportunity now during the holidays starting tomorrow. We will we'll have a free admission until January 3rd, so I hope uh, many of you come. Yeah, it's, it really is worth seeing. It's extraordinary. But I'm curious as to your take, because a lot of these are contemporary pieces. Uh, and I'm curious as to the way that you have to balance things that have truly stood the test of time, which I think in the art world uh, attests to something's greatness often. And it's really hard to judge something that is 
one, two, three years old in some cases. Uh, how, how do you strike that balance between um, understanding where contemporary art fits into a place that also celebrates pieces that are thousands of years old? I think that one, of the, the, uh, one of the things that the DIA does very well is that we use art, contemporary or old art, old masters, as a platform where we can discuss things that are happening in our society today. So you can come to the museum as an art historian and as a connoisseur and visit the collection, but you, I think, uh, people in the area, anybody can come to the DI without any background in our history and really have a full and a wonderful experience visiting, visiting the mm -hmm. museum. And that can be with contemporary. Yeah than with all masters, with both. You've also got a really interesting moment here where because of the bankruptcy, yeah. uh, more people are paying attention and have come in to look at the DIA from the outside. Uh, with the Frida and uh, 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 Diego Rivera uh, exhibition last year, we also saw a renewed interest in uh, what Rivera did here. And you had pieces going out all over the world saying that this is the American Sistine Chapel. Uh, <laughs> there's a certain amount of pressure, I think, on you, right? Because don't you, you must sense that you have a moment where there are a lot of people paying attention to what's going on at the DIA. We just love people paying attention to us, and we <laughs> want to pay attention to them as well. I think the museum museum is, as I said, extraordinary, and the Diego Rivera frescoes are really uh, unique in the world, and as Michelangelo's frescoes in the Sixteen Chapel, I'm very comfortable saying that we have Rivera's Sixteen Chapel here in Detroit. You are. You don't feel like that's uh, kind of over the top hyperbole. It is absolutely a great thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about uh, Graham Beale. I'm, I'm curious as to what you learned from him, what you hope to carry on from his, uh, his tenure at the DIA. Graham was uh, a great director, was a wonderful administration, administrator of, of the DIA. And I think uh, one of the uh, uh, great lessons that I learned from him is how to present art. Mm. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, the DIA presents the art into the galleries in a way that anybody in the world can come and understand our message, our stories. You don't have to be an art historian. You just have to be a citizen, someone who wants to come and have a good time and good learn and learn something about art and life. I think Graham did that very well, and that is what I would like to build upon. Terrific. Salvador, thank you very much for being here. Great uh, introduction, I think, to, to a lot of people who maybe haven't had, got a chance to hear you speak before. Best of luck at the DIA. Thank you very much. Again, remember, 30 Americans uh, for free uh, here uh, starting tomorrow uh, through January 3rd. We'll continue with our look back and look ahead 2015 as we make the turn into 2016. This is Flashpoint.